Hey guys, hello and welcome to Zen Innovations. So my friend, if you are a special person who uses a specially large, gigantic battery bank, be it 24 volts, 36 volts, 48 volts or something like that, where a lot of batteries are connected together, then your battery bank might suffer a problem which is known as a balance. So here for an example, I have this a huge absolutely large battery bank which is configured in uh, 24 volts and this battery bank is now down and suffering due to imbalance if you want to know more about this uh, particular experimental battery bank i already have a video over here in the i button or you can find the link in description below so in today's video we are going to talk about three different topics First is I'm going to show you how to actually measure and find out if your battery bank is suffering from imbalance. In the second phase, I'm going to talk what is imbalance and how does it happen? What, what are the reasons? And in the third and final step, I'm going to teach you how to correct, how to remedy that imbalance using not just one, but two different methods. So this video might be a little longer than expected, but please make sure to watch this video entirely without skipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to my multimeter so that we can start measuring stuff. You guys go there down below and hit those nice little like and subscribe buttons. And let's begin today's video. Guys, the time is in morning and this uh, particular battery bank is being charged by solar energy. And what we'll do is we'll check the voltage of this battery bank. And to check the voltage, I'll put my trusty little clamp meter into the DC voltage range, as you can see. So first, let's start by measuring the entire range of this battery, which is this complete battery bank. And here we can see that uh, the reading is uh, 29 volts, or you can say, yeah, 28.8. And at this point, you might be saying, well, Zen, that's a very nice, happy battery bank, because 28.8 volts means 14.4 volts per battery which is the ideal charging voltage for this kind of uh, lead acid battery bank I have explained over here in this particular video. So are these happy batteries or not? Well, the problem starts here. So let's check this uh, individual battery. And here we can see, oops, that is 15 volts, guys. That's really, uh, really high. So this particular poor battery is being cooked. It's being overcharged at 15 volts. And this particular battery over here, this guy, this is not getting enough voltage. So this battery is at just 13.3. And we know that for proper buildup of uh, gravity, for the proper backup of these batteries, they have to be charged at 14.4 volts, which is the peak charging voltage. But this uh, poor battery is going to stay undercharged at just 13.3. And this guy is getting very angry at around 15 volts. Even though the range of this entire bank, you can see the total is uh, very good at 28 point something volts. So, so this is the idea which your inverter sees. So your inverter sees like, oh, the batteries are at 28 point something. They are very happy. But what the inverter does not see is this. So a very angry battery bank at 15.2 volts. And guys, during the discharge, the story is uh, even more terrible. So I have this uh, trusty clamp meter with me. Let's check the voltage. So this is in the DC voltage range. And let's check this uh, particular battery over here. And the reading of this battery is 12.2 uh, volts, which is a pretty healthy voltage considering that these batteries are on load. So sufficient energy is uh, available in this particular battery. But let's uh, take a look at its twin brother. You can see this series tie over here. So this guy is in series with this one. And the voltage of this one is, uh, oops, that's just 10.2 volts. That is even below the official discharge limit of 10 and a half volts. So just 10.2 volts in this particular battery. That's how bad the imbalance is. So not only are we, we are getting very poor performance out of these batteries, but this battery is practically dying due to this kind of imbalance. And it's just a matter of time before this battery will be well and truly dead. Then we have to throw it out. So that's the matter with imbalance during discharge. Coming to the point number two of this video, let's talk why does this imbalance happen? What is the reason? 
And a very common reason that I see for this kind of imbalance is the use of dissimilar batteries in any way. So for example, if you have a 60 amp battery over here, which is in series with an 80 amp, not going to work. Again, a flooded lead acid battery, you know, the one with these caps in series with uh, a sealed maintenance free battery, not going to work. Lead acid battery combined with a lithium battery, of course, not going to work. Guys, there are these certain set of rules that you need to follow. And if you want to learn all of these rules in details, then I already have a video over here. You can go ahead and check it out in the I button or in the description below. Please go ahead and check out that video if you are planning to put your batteries together in any kind of configuration, be it series or parallel. It is very important to watch because any kind of repairs, any kind of remediation is not a replacement of improperly designed battery bank. So if you have the wrong kind of plans for your battery bank, it is never going to work properly, no matter what you do to it. So the first reason is using dissimilar batteries in any which ways, which could be different uh, models, it could be different age, it could be different type, it could be different chemistry, just anything. It is not going to work, it will never succeed. But over here, by taking a look at these batteries, you might be wondering, well, Zen, that is not what I see here. So what we have over here are these two very similar batteries. So they are, uh, you know, the very same model. Both of them are 60 amps. They were brought together. So yes, they are the same age. They are the same model. They are even the same brand. So at this point, you might be asking Zen, why did this happen? How did perfectly matched battery banks still get out of balance? So let's talk about a few factors which are not very practically in our own hands, but still it happens and the battery bank gets thrown out of the balance. So the one reason would be very minor differences when these batteries are made. And these differences uh, make themselves obvious after a few years. So very conveniently, or you can say very inconveniently after the warranty on battery runs out, like after three, four or five years, there are these minor differences between the batteries. So you can, uh, you might be able to say like difference in the electrolyte levels, uh, difference in the quality of plates, difference in the construction, different batches. There might be such very small, very minor differences in these battery banks, even though uh, they are of the exact same model, they are brought at the same time, that uh, one or other will perform slightly differently than its twin brother and then they'll start to drift. And when they start to drift, it gets worse. So it keeps on increasing. The second reason might be temperature. Yes, this is a huge difference that uh, I notice. And what happens is that sometimes the batteries are placed in such a way that temperature of one battery is higher than the other one. Again, this causes that kind of drift issue and then slowly their voltages start to differ. So one battery has a higher or lower voltage than the other one. So sometimes what I see is the issue related to placement. So for example, if I have this battery bank over here and let's just imagine that it would be uh, very close to this uh, huge inverter, which is blasting out, you know, hot air using it exhaust fans. And if this battery would be uh, closer to this machine, where the fans are, where the vents are, then it will get blasted with hot air and hence the temperature of one battery might be different than the other one. There's also one more reason I've seen is the placement near a window. So for example, say if you had a window over here like this, which gives direct sunlight on one battery, then again, this will run hotter and this battery would be in shadow. So there are these placement issues which need careful planning and solving. So that was uh, regarding what are the reasons for causing this kind of difference, this kind of imbalance among the batteries. Now let's move towards the third and most important point, which is how to solve the imbalance of batteries. So first I'm going to start with the simplest kind of uh, solution, which is possible. And here in my example, I have a 24 volt battery bank. So two batteries are connected in series like this and then the effective voltage at these terminals is 24 volts. The entire set is like that. So it is made in sets of two, like that in sets of two. So what we have to do is first, we need to disconnect the battery bank. So we need to remove the wires which are going towards your solar setup or your inverter or the kind of machine which you have. And then what we need is a 12 volt inverter. Guys, a 12 volt inverter is designed to work with a single 12 volt battery. So what we have to do is remove your 24 volt system. You will have to 
undo all the wires you can see i removed all of that i have removed all of that so after removing we need to charge them individually on a 12 volt inverter and bring it up to full charging voltage you just need to let it charge properly so that any underperforming batteries you remember this one this was very uh, low on the performance so it can be slowly brought up to its op optimum operating health so that is uh, one way to do it and if you don't have a 12 volt inverter then what you can do is you can approach any battery shop or service center and these guys have those big huge heavy duty chargers so even if you don't have a 12 volt inverter you can carry the battery to those uh, battery repair guys those service guys and they'll be able to charge them uh, on their on their charger just ask them to do it individually because if you put a bunch of uh, batteries on the charger again the issue will be the same so ask them to do it separately so one by one so charge one battery then charge other battery and charge other battery so on so you will have to uh, this is a time consuming project yes so we'll have to wait until each and every battery is charged to the optimal charging level which is generally 14.4 volts for lead acid batteries if you are interested in knowing the default best charging voltages for batteries then i already have a video over here in the i button or in the description where i have explained optimum charging voltages for different kinds of batteries so that was method number one using a 12 volt inverter or 12 volt charger let's talk about the next method and here you might be able to see i have this uh, interesting looking clamps right so where do these clamps go well the clamps go over here so this is the kind of jugard method that i have done and if you are a kind of person which says then i don't have a 12 volt inverter and i don't want to go outside and visit those battery guys and get it charged over there uh, tell me something which is easy to do with something i can do on my own accord in the comfort of my residence then this is the method which you might like so what i have used over here is a, a dc to dc buck converter this is also known as a step down converter and if you want to buy this thing then a buying link will be available in the description below please consider my affiliate links because uh, it helps to support the channel as well so here what i'm doing is i have used this uh, dc to dc buck converter and i have already uh, calibrated the buck converter to output 14.8 volts so 14.8 volts is uh, the kind of mild equalizing voltage and what this uh, equalizing voltage does is it it brings up the gravity it uh, you know make sure that all the cells are balanced by giving them a very slight overcharge so any kind of uh, excess uh, differences between the gravity of the cells between the voltages of the cell gets burned off and hence the entire battery bank is restored it is something like sharpening a pencil you might say you want a new point you sharpen it so this is what equalizing does it brings all the cells to equal and yes since we are charging all of the batteries individually to 14.8 it will also balance them out so this poor guy you remember this was being charged only till 13.3 uh, or whatever so even this thing will get charged at 14.8 even this will get charged at 14.8 which is going to equalize the difference it is going to equalize the imbalance between the batteries and hence they will be restored to their full working potential i generally use 14.8 volts for myself but you might want to check the user manual which is uh, there with the battery or you want to ask the manufacturer for the recommended equalizing voltages for your particular battery that would be the best way so here i have showed you two different uh, methods how to equalize the battery bank and yes let me tell you how to power this thing so you might be wondering then you have attached this uh, very nice little contraption but how does this work and where does the power come from so for powering this uh, device uh, what i did is i connected a 100 watt solar panel so you can go with a 100 watt or 150 or even 180 watt solar panel which is uh, provided over here in the input so at this point here the input section is a 100 or 150 watt solar panel i used a bridge rectifier because these things are not isolated and there is a chance that it will uh, start pushing the battery energy back towards your solar panels if there's not enough sunlight so use a bridge rectifier or uh, at least a diode to prevent that backflow of energy so after connecting the solar panel what you have to do is first you have to take a screwdriver and you have to calibrate these trim ports you see these trim ports over here you have to calibrate them 
so the voltage would be 14.8 as i suggested or you can ask your manufacturer this is the cc port which is the constant current and the current would be 10 percent of your battery capacity so it would be uh, maximum say uh, 10 or 15 amps for this 150 h battery you can go slightly lower which is safer but not any higher so this is the kind of setting you want to use amps roughly you can say 5 to 10 percent of your battery and the voltage would be 14.8 or as we discussed earlier and on the input side i have a bridge rectifier and over here this wire goes to the panels there is one more golden tip i would like to offer that uh, if possible carry your battery on the roof of your house on the terrace because any kind of outgassing any hydrogen generation which usually happens uh, during the equalizing cycle it can get vented off so that will also help you place your solar panels it will be easier to connect in the sun and then you can put this somewhere you know near it where any kind of escaping gases can just go away like that and not fill up inside your home so that is one way how you can use a, a dc to dc buck converter to equalize your battery uh, i already have a dedicated video over here for these buck converters so if you want to know in detail how to calibrate these machines how to uh, you know run the trim pots and how to calibrate this uh, voltage and current settings which we talked about earlier then you can go and check out that particular video so that was regarding the two or three different methods that uh, will help you restore the health of your battery bank and bring them to good working order i hope you liked it of course your wallet is going to like it and most importantly the environment is going to like it because long life of these batteries is very important so that's it for this neat little video guys. I hope you liked it. Take care and have a nice day.